So I've had the privilege of being a member of this association twice. I think Jerry Holland's going to be the only other one to have that, but his is in the same county. Mine came in two different counties. And those were during two very different time periods in our state. The first time I became a member of this association was in 1994, nearly 30 years ago. At that time, I was appointed by the governor of Florida, Lawton Childs, Walken Lawton, uh, to be the supervisor of elections in DeSoto County. Didn't work in the office, didn't have any staff there uh, to, to help. It was just me showing up the first day. So those who have been appointed, uh, I feel your pain and know what that's like. The other thing is interesting about this, Gertrude's smiling in the back of the room at that time. Gertrude Walker is the only supervisor of elections that's still here from that time period consistently uh, during that time. So it's good to see you, Gertrude, back there. In those days, Florida had approximately 6 million registered voters. Uh, but since that time, many things have changed in our state. Today, we have more than 14 million voters. That's more than a two-fold increase in that period of time. And I was gonna say, with my friend Bill Powell's there, that's not a surprise if you've been on I-4 lately or anywhere else in the straight state where there's a lot of traffic. Our voter rolls are continuing to grow daily here in the third largest but fastest growing state in the, United States, in the country. But in addition to our state's changes, this association has changed during those years. Even the name of the group. We were the Florida State Association of Supervisors of Elections, FSASC. Try to say that three times fast. <laughs> then we got smart and said, well, we're just the Florida Supervisors of Elections. That's what we are, right? However, one thing has remained constant in all these years, and that's the unwavering dedication among Florida's 67 Supervisors of Elections to provide the same level of high level of service to the voters of this great state in Florida. Florida's elections professionals have faced a myriad of challenges over the years and decades. Whether it was the 2000 presidential election, and some of you were in the room for that, but our numbers are getting fewer and fewer. Or in more recent years, the pandemic. It was interesting to conduct elections during the pandemic. This PPP coming up. You know, that was like 17, 16 days after the first cases of COVID in Florida four years ago or three years ago. Or even more recently, the increased interest in the mechanics of the elections process. The professionalism of the supervisors of elections, our data, dedicated staff in this room and back home in our counties, and the thousands and thousands of poll workers throughout the Sunshine State that professionalism continues to grow and shine every day. As you know, we're on the front lines, or we have been on the front lines of promoting and protecting our nation and state's electoral system for a long time. And time and again, we've risen to the occasion to face the many challenges foreseen, and maybe more often unforeseen, while going from being the butt of jokes in 2000 to now becoming the National Model for Professional Elections Administration. That's all of you. And so how did this reversal happen? Well, for one thing, Florida's elections officials have learned many lessons over the years, sometimes the hard way when things don't go like we play, you know, plan them. Best laid plans, right? But we, as an association, have remained steadfast. We've expanded our training and educational opportunities. We share best practices. We continue to do that, like this morning with list maintenance, great panel, to truly become, uh, to making this more than just a job as an elections administrator. This is now a profession for all of us. And we've shown that, and we've shown that to the public. So with the help of everyone in this room and our shared wisdom, we will continue to be a shining example of how to best conduct accessible, fair, and secure elections for our voters and maintain our status as the gold standard in the United States of America. Thanks again for the honor, and I look forward to working with you over the next year, shoulder to shoulder, both as colleagues and friends, as we quickly move toward the next presidential election cycle. I've heard that that might be sooner rather than later. <laughs> if you've looked at Twitter today. 
little levity. But anyhow, God bless all of you. Thank you for the honor again. Enjoy the rest of the conference of the day. And at this point, because I'm not officially president until Monday, Mark Early comes back up here. He thought he was finished with all of this. But we're not going to let him off the hook with you. So thank you all. Appreciate you, each and every one of you.